So uh, very pleased to, to welcome Alan Clickenhouse from uh, IBM. He's the digital transformation uh, business strategist. And in keeping with the theme of accelerating digitization, Alan's going to talk about um, how to overcome the three largest obstacles to uh, digital transformation. So welcome, Alan. Thanks, John. So great to be with you all it, almost in Jakarta. Wish I was uh, actually there, but maybe we'll come back to that day soon. So um, let me start sharing my screen here, get the actual right content up there. Okay, great. And I, will, I will leave you to it. Okay, that looks good to you, John? Yep, very good. Okay, perfect. So. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, uh, hello everybody. My name is Alan Glickenhaus. I am the digital transformation business strategist for IBM. Um, so let me just tell you what that means. I, I, I um, have a great job. I, I travel around the world when we can do that kind of thing, travel around the world and meet with businesses of all different sizes, all different industries, talk to them about digital transformation, APIs, uh, what they're thinking of doing both from a business perspective and an IT perspective and share with them the things that I've learned along the way. So um, so that's uh, what I, I do. Um, I speak at events like API Days. I've done every API Days event for the last uh, year, for sure, and, and maybe multiple years. And when I'm not doing that, I'm writing about it. And one of the articles I've written was actually titled Overcoming the Three Largest Obstacles to Digital Transformation. I'll, I'll have a link to that later. Um, the uh, topics that you see where underneath where it says author, are the kinds of things that I write about uh, when I'm not traveling, which is you know nowadays pretty much ever, uh, all the things. And the numbers are the number of articles that I've published in that area. And so today we're going to cover things that I've talked about in, in several of these articles. Um, I think I actually need to update one of those numbers. But anyway, um, we'll move on. So let's get into this. So uh, when we talk about overcoming the three largest obstacles for digital transformation, maybe one of the obstacles, maybe it's number four, is that we need to come up with a common definition for what it means to, to do a digital transformation. And so uh, as I talk to businesses, we, we start off with that. What is digital transformation to them and what does it mean? And to some of the businesses I speak to, it uh, deals with um, technology. So it's all about digital technologies and doing things with, uh, with social media and mobile and things like that, emerging technologies. And that's fine if that's what they, they, they feel that they want to to, to tackle. Uh, other businesses are going beyond that and not only worrying about the technology, but also worrying about uh, the business. What, what kind of new business things can I do um, in taking advantage of these digital technologies um, and, and create more, more value? And, and then what this definition that I'm showing on the screen here does, and it's the one that I particularly like, uh, is take those first two concepts and add one more, which is uh, to change the perspective uh, of the business from thinking about what you offer to uh, uh, the world uh, to instead what your customers want from you. And uh, in some cases, what your customers want from you and what you offer to the world may match up one for one. But in other cases, uh, what your customer is looking for, you're a part of the solution, but not the entire solution. Uh, and so that becomes a whole different uh, perspective and it's probably uh, the hardest uh, uh, obstacle that we'll talk about uh, for businesses to overcome. So making the customer the center of the universe and, and your business being part of that solution um, is what the, the leading edge customers, uh, businesses that are um, trying to do a digital transformation are, are trying to tackle. Now around that, there are some other things happening. Uh, in the meantime, in the IT world, um, a lot of businesses are, are moving to cloud. They're thinking about cloud. They're doing cloud. Uh, they're also doing microservice architectures. They're uh, maybe doing APIs. APIs have been around for a number of years now. And they're also thinking about um, using artificial intelligence. And, and if you think about what these things are doing, uh, the APIs, the microservices, and, and a business that has some of their things on premise and some of their things in the cloud, and they're working with other businesses, uh, to put together this solution for this customer that also has microservices and APIs and some of their things in, on premise and some of the things on the cloud, it becomes a challenge to get all those things to work together. And, and that's uh, one of the challenges we'll talk about as well. So I already gave away that the first challenge uh, and maybe the hardest challenge is this changing perspective. Um, you know, we, we in our businesses have uh, over 
you know, the life of our business focused on the things that we offer to the world. You know, we and IBM, we sell software, we sell services, we sell hardware. And so we come in and we talk to people about the products that we offer. And, 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 and then we, we aren't putting the customer perspective when we're doing that, right? We're putting our perspective of what do we have to tell you about that we do? And, and we want to change that um, to what are you trying to accomplish? In the case of a digital transformation, you're trying to accomplish a digital transformation. How do what we sell support that? And, and so it's not about what we're offering you. It's about what you're trying to do. Uh, let's put it in a non-IT scenario, right? So um, if I want to buy a car, um, I, I, I don't go to a bank to buy a car. I go to a, an auto dealership to buy a car. But as part of buying a car, I probably need to get a loan, uh, or I may need to get a loan. I probably need to get uh, uh, um, insurance. I may need to get some kind of a registration for the car. And so there's a whole series of things that a buyer of a car needs to do. Um, and, and my business as a bank or as an insurance company or as a government agency is part of that solution, but it's not the whole solution. And so thinking about that customer perspective is a challenge and it's a challenge because our business measures ourselves on what we do and not about on our customer success and that's that's what makes this a big challenge so overcoming this challenge is is very difficult because it's ingrained in the core systems that we build our system our, our uh, business upon and it uh, has to stem from the executives and the customer and the uh, executive priorities and making this a priority to to get uh, your your business wrapped around the customer. And so when you do that, you start to think about uh, you know, the customers that you might get. And, and some customers that you're getting are coming to your website, they're coming to your physical locations, but there are many of them that are not. Um, if I'm a bank and I wanna have loans for, for auto uh, sales, uh, maybe I can go out and partner with people who sell automobiles and and get them to offer my bank as the the bank to get their loans from and have some kind of a financial arrangement around that which we'll get to in the in the next challenge so this is something that i've been busy been talking to customers about for you know quite a number of years now about using part using uh, partnering scenarios and third party applications social networks and other kinds of things to reach new markets and reach new channels to market for your business and and put that customer first uh, mentality there are businesses that are doing this uh, in 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 southeast asia uh dbs in singapore is uh and this is just one example uh, of what they're doing, but they have taken a customer centric view. And so a customer who wants to buy a home. And so in buying a home, I not only have to, you know, deal with uh, the purchase of, of the property and, and the home, but I also have different scenarios for paying for it and for insuring it and for all these things. And DBS um, has put together a holistic solution around buying a home. And that's just one example of what they're doing. And so, you know, businesses are starting to think in this way and, and, th and this is great. This is, this is where businesses wanna be. The, the second big uh, obstacle is this new business models, right? So we get, you know, um, ingrained in the kind of things that we offer to the market. So, you know, we wanna sell you our services. Uh, but again, around that concept of other people's services may also be a part of the solution, um, your business, and your customers may have a, a good relationship, hopefully you do, and, and there's some kind of a trust relationship maybe with your business and your customers. And, and so, you know, they're, they're coming to you uh, for the, your solutions, uh, but if you can provide them additional solutions, um, maybe they need some kind of shipment capability and you, it's not your business to do shipments, but, but shipments is part of the solution. Um, we could add that into our portfolio and maybe make the shipment company's APIs available in an API marketplace. And this is just an example. It's not it's certainly the only way to do this. Um, and, and then I can offer that. And maybe there's payment scenarios where, where others can offer payments and whatever other kinds of things make sense for the customer set that you're going after, we can put them all into a common API marketplace where we are driving this marketplace. And we are validating these potential uh, providers of services and the customer can come into the marketplace and, and use all our services together and there are various business models around this that you can put in place that are new and beyond what you did before to to either make more money because of the holistic approach that you're taking or potentially to take a percentage of, of uh, the sales that you get 
through this marketplace. Again, I've done whole presentations just on on uh, marketplaces uh, as a single topic, so I won't go deeper into that now. But but you get the feeling uh, that hopefully I, you get the feeling that I'm trying to convey here that um, marketplaces is just a new kind of business model that people are doing. I, I also have, and there's a link on this page, and you'll get all these uh, these links when you get this content uh, which we're making available to you. Um, to a white paper on business models for APIs and monetization. And in fact, I keep getting requests from people to talk about this uh, with different different uh, people. Even just this week, I've gotten several. Um, and there's always this big focus on monetization. And most of the time, people are thinking about this second column here where the developer is going to pay you to use your APIs. And while there are some examples where that occurs, it's not the most common scenario. The more common is in the indirect space where uh, businesses are, are getting more money by getting more customers and getting more business and not necessarily by directly getting paid by someone for the use of their APIs. And, and again, I'm not going to get into the details because of the lack of time I have here um, in this particular session. Um, but you can download this white paper and, and take a look at the different models. In here, I describe each model and I describe a customer that's doing each one of the models. And these are only the four high level um, uh, categories. Underneath this, there are several more. I think there's 20 something total categories that I've identified and, and given you examples in. So if you're interested, take a look at that white paper and, um, and you can, you can uh, see all these different models. Uh, so let me get into the third uh, obstacle. So you, let's say you're doing uh, what you're supposed to do from a business perspective. You're you're thinking about the customer. You're starting to expand your uh, business models and, and trying to do new things, and it's still not working. And and what we're seeing is that this is unfortunately happening with a lot of businesses that um, because of this challenge that I uh, alluded to earlier, where your business is doing so many different things to move faster um, with agile uh, development processes, uh, microservice architected things to give you that more agility, moving to the cloud to be able to react to opportunities faster. It's starting to distribute the, um, the, the IT resources into multiple different places. And if you don't fix the integration challenge that goes along with having all these different uh, teams and locations where things are existing, uh, it's not going to work. And so 70% of digital transformation projects are failing due to a lack of integration uh, quality and, and challenges. So the need for integration is getting higher. And so digital transformation is driving that, cloud is driving that, microservices is driving that. Um, and, and so all of these things are, are pushing the need for integration faster and um, and to do it with the same resources you were doing it with before is simply not going to work. And, and so what we're suggesting to you is to overcome this challenge that uh, you're going to need to do things with, with a number of different perspectives. First of all, from your people and process perspective, there are things that you're going to want to push for decentralization. And we're going to talk about that in a little more detail in a second. The architecture has to support this and the technology needs to support this. And, and so this has been a big focus for us in IBM um, that we're, we're thinking about how can we make you successful in your digital, digital transformation with these challenges around this area of integration. So actually an article that I just published over the weekend looks at the his history of integration and how we move forward to where we are today and where we're going to go next. And I'm going to have a second part of that coming out next week. Um, but if you look at the history, we started with, um, depending on how far back you go, go even further than this, but a centralized enterprise service bus SOA, service oriented architecture kind of a, an approach, which gave you a, a very tight, well governed, uh, central integration team that was driving your complete integration um, uh, capability for the entire company. And unfortunately, that was not uh, going to move fast enough as we started to get into these more distributed uh, scenarios. And, and so APIs helped in the sense of socializing the capabilities that you had and making them available for self-service consumption and worrying about the security and all those kinds of things. But we needed to go beyond that. We needed to get to the point where not only are we making APIs available, but we're also making them available in ways 
that that they're more fine grained and and can be deployed um, in, in various places like on the cloud and on premise, right? So we don't want to have only a single location where these things are are being deployed. And now what we want to do is move that even further out into a decentralized team uh, approach um, for ownership of the APIs and and for driving your success at that team level. And so the question becomes, how do you do that? And so the first thing is is to think about you know what an API does and what the things that are behind the API do. And so one of the concepts that that I often have conversations with businesses about is this is this differentiation. What's an API? And the API is about exposure. It's about what the consumer wants, and it's a control point for giving the consumer what they want um, and, and making sure that they're allowed to get uh, those things, right? So, so it's a perspective into the enterprise, but it's not the business logic and the things that happen behind the interface that actually supply the answer. And so behind that, there may be other forms of integration, uh, application integration, uh, messaging, and, and, and so on that that actually pull together the different constructs that are needed from the different systems that provide this, wherever they may be, some on the on premise and some in the cloud. So separate that thinking of, of uh, exposure from the implementation. And, and, and if you do that, you start to have a lot more uh, flexibility for the things that you can expose and the things that you want to control um, behind the scenes. The other thing to think about is how do you deploy this? And historically, we've deployed these things into this centralized kind of uh, integration runtime where everything comes together in a gateway in the, in the API sense or in um, an ESB in the old uh, service-oriented architecture sense. And, and that just simply also doesn't scale and certainly doesn't work very well when you're talking about multiple clouds being involved and having to come from cloud A on-premise to a, a centralized integration thing to then go out to cloud B makes absolutely no sense. And, and so we need to be able to not only have the clouds be used for the applications that we're um, pushing out there, but also for the integration artifacts that we're pushing out there. So we need to be able to push integration runtimes into the different domains as well. And so this gives us the flexibility to start to separate this out and to then also let each one of the domains be run by a particular organization that wants to run um, in, in a particular way. And the other thing that we're seeing uh, a lot now is um, events or asynchronous kinds of scenarios for APIs. And, and so uh, again, APIs now are you know, not the new kid on the block anymore. And, and many applications that have used APIs very successfully <coughs> are starting to put a lot of uh, resources on the back-end systems because every API call that comes in comes through the gateway, hits the back-end systems, wherever they may be. And as we start to get more and more business, those back-end systems have to scale up to handle all that. And what we're seeing now is uh, that while that model works and is necessary for some scenarios, there are other scenarios that might benefit from having event streams or events that push out information that make it available uh, outside these uh, systems of record is what SOR stands for, um, that, that give the information out to the microservice applications so that when they need that information, they don't have to make the API call to come into the gateway, to come into the enterprise systems and come back out again. The information is already locally there in the, in the microservice application. And this is what people are doing with event streams in Kafka. So, Again, this is another tool in the toolbox that, that we're seeing uh, is very useful in conjunction with APIs and in conjunction with the other integration uh, capabilities. So uh, let me finish off in the last few minutes I have here just on where do we think this is going, right? So that's, that's kind of what we're seeing happening now. Um, the next things you're going to start to see from, from IBM are, are all around this area of automation, artificial intelligence, closed loop, and, and multi-style integration. And, and so this is, we think, going to enable you to, to really scale up your capability to deliver what you need for integration um, to be successful with digital transformation. So 
I talked earlier about the centralized team that was doing all these integration things. If you have an API expert team or you have an integration expert team and they're the only ones that can do this, you're just not going to be able to manage it. And so how do we um, not scale it up to the levels that you need? So how do we get the skills into everybody so that they can do what the centralized team could do? The answer is you, you really can't. You, you can't you know, make somebody an expert in, in, in this uh, automatically. So, so what you have to do is take the difficulty away from it. And, and so to do that, we automate things and we use artificial intelligence to capture the best practices from what people do and make that the way that it makes it easier for the people who now need to do these integrations to do it in the way that the experts would have done it. And so we automate things in the life cycle. We, we use artificial intelligence and best practices to build in um, and remove the, the skills barrier that lets them do these things that they need to do. The second thing we're focused on is closed loop integration. So in your enterprise, you may experience things that others don't. And so having general purpose kinds of testing and, and, and things like that, that don't uh, really deal with what you're seeing in your environment are not really what what uh, going to meet the need. And so what we want to do is take your real world experiences from what is happening inside your company and feed that back into the artificial intelligence that we're working with to provide a closed loop that gives you the, the visibility into what's going to work in your environment. So that's really critical as well. And then the third thing, and, and maybe I should say the first thing, because this is the one that you're seeing um, today, um, is that multiple styles can be used together. So I already talked about APIs and, and events being used together, APIs and uh, application integration and messaging. And, and, and so having uh, multiple styles work together to provide a solution um, is going to be like using the best tool for the job. And, and so, you know, when you go to do some project around your house, you may need a screwdriver and you need a hammer and you need, you know, whatever other things you need, a saw, you know, and so on. Um, you use the right tool to do the job. You don't use a hammer to, you know, saw wood or anything like that, right? So, so um, having multiple styles of integration available to you when you're using the right one for the right job would give you the flexibility to do things better. And, and so this has been our strategy. So we are, uh, we have for a while now had a product in this integration space that we call the Cloud Pack for Integration. And basically what this is, is everything that IBM does in the area of integration, API, application integration, events, uh, file transfers, security, messaging, it's all in there. So if you get this from IBM, you don't have to worry about how much capacity do I need to buy for API and how much do I need to buy for MQ and how much do I need to buy for events. You just buy the capacity of this toolkit and it has all the tools in it and you can use any tool you want. So within that capacity that you've purchased, just pick which tools you want to use and, and go for it. And, and so this makes your life simpler um, in deciding, you know, what tool do I want to use for this particular job? Okay, I take out my toolbox and I go ahead and use it. And it just hopefully simplifies your life over predicting you know, each individual tool that you might need to buy separately and how much for each tool do you need to buy and, and so on. Uh, and of course, this is all built on microservices and all the things that I've referenced from a flexibility perspective, it's all gonna get built into the Cloud Pack for integration. So this is our strategy. It's what we think is the right answer to help you scale up and to beat that obstacle for digital transformation about um, getting past the, the hurdle of, of integration challenges. So let me just uh, finalize it here. I think I'm about out of time. Um, you know, I, I talked about three different um, business challenges and, and IT challenges. The first one was um, about perspective. The second one was about business models. And the third one was about integration. And, and so for all of these things to be successful, you need to have executive and business backing. If you're trying to do a digital transformation in only IT, um, you're not gonna be successful. Um, understand what you think digital transformation means to you and why you're doing it. And, and so that's, uh, of course, a, a key thing that will help you identify your goals and your strategy to be successful on that. Um, this will take some special um, 
a, a commitment inside your company to roles, responsibilities, resources. Um, and, and so that's that's absolutely critical as well. And, and finally, communication, uh, absolutely critical to get the message out. And treat this as the way the company does business now. It's not about um, you know doing a project one time and being finished. This is gonna be the way the company does things from now on. So with that, let me finish up. I, I mentioned earlier there are some uh, things in the, in, that I've written about, and you can get more information from my writings uh, if you want to go there. The article that I wrote um, is titled Overcoming the Three Largest Obstacles to Digital Transformation, and that's in a magazine called uh, RT Insights. So you can find that there. And there are, I think it's over 160 different um, articles that I've written uh, already. Uh, over many years. The link at the top left will get you to everything I've written starting with 2021 as the suffix now. If you change that to 2020, you'll get last year's and, and so on. Uh, the article I just published over the weekend is the bottom right one on this page. Good integration patterns never die, you just add more. So that one, Hot Off the Press, just came out last weekend. And I have a second part to that, uh, which will come out uh, next week. And there are two more uh, pages of these these links that you can uh, catch up on in your spare time. So with that, let me finish up and I'll stop sharing here. And hopefully I didn't run too much over. So uh, thanks thanks very much, Alan, for that uh, perspective. You've taken it from the, the big picture and, and also uh, get, um, gathering lessons from uh, globally. Uh, how APIs can help you to achieve um, digital transformation, how to how to overcome the the obstacles. So this is a great um, entree to our to our next talk. But I also want to mention that uh, people um, people can learn more from by contacting you directly or visiting the the IBM uh, booth uh, in the Partners Village. And also your team are running a, a workshop. Uh, that starts in about 25 minutes um, Great. in the in the workshop uh, area on how to manage and uh, and socialize Kafka topics with um, the IBM Cloud Pack for for integration. So you introduce the the IBM Cloud Pack for for integration, and people can learn a lot more uh, in in detail um, in in that workshop. So thanks thanks very much, Alan. You're welcome. Thanks, John.